In this video, we're going to show you how to replace your AC compressor on your Nissan Rogue, located on the front side of your engine. So we have to remove our center cap here, reach behind that and pull outward. Set that aside. Using a 21 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen and remove these lug nuts. Go ahead and grab that wheel. Remove it and set it aside. On the bottom side right here, we want to go ahead and loosen and remove these three Phillips head screws. On the inside of the liner right here, I want to get to remove this cover. Remove these plastic push pins here. Use your trim tool to pop out the base inserts here. Sometimes these will break so you can plan on sourcing out some replacements. Remove that cover. Want to remove our mud flap here. There are four T20 Torx screws. One, two, three, and there's one on the bottom here. Loosen and remove these. Grab the fourth one right here. We're using an extension to gain access to that. And then remove the flap, set that aside. Remove these two Phillips head screws on the upper portion of the liner. And on the inside of our fender liner here, there are gonna be six of these retainer buttons that run up and around the perimeter inside here. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove those. Try and use a trim tool here to pop out the center button. And then remove the clip. With all the plastic push pins removed, go ahead and work that fender liner out. Locate your belt tensioner right here using a 14 millimeter socket. Gonna go ahead and put your ratchet on there. Go ahead and work that belt off. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the belt off of some of these pulleys off the water pump and alternator. 
Now, before tackling this job, you want to go ahead, bring your vehicle down to a local professional shop and have the AC system evacuated of its AC charge. Using a 10 millimeter socket extension and ratchet, you want to go ahead and loosen and remove these bolts holding these lines to the air compressor. I did use a spray solvent to clean any debris and oils, anything like that, off around these ports. Use some compressed air to blow them off. I'll go ahead and grab this port here, and we're just going to wiggle this out of the compressor itself. Now, there is an O-ring pulling that in. I'm going to bring this up. There is an O-ring right here. You want to go ahead and find something to cap or seal this hose off here. I'm going to use a plug that we have here and press that in. That's going to prevent any moisture from getting inside of the line here. I'm going to do the same for the other hose beside there. I'm going to go ahead and use a plug for the other hose here as well. Just set that in. I want to go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector on the top here. There's a little spring clip on the top. I'm going to push in on that, disconnect that connector. Now there are four bolts holding the AC compressor. There's two on the top here we have access to, two on the bottom. We're going to use our 12 millimeter socket, loosen and remove the two upper bolts from up top here. Using our 12 millimeter gear wrench, we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove our lower two bolts here. Go ahead and work the AC compressor up and out. Now what we want to do is pay attention to the amount of pag oil that we can get out of the old compressor. We're going to use a measuring cup here. I'm going to tip this up. I'm going to go ahead and rotate our compressor here. Now, if you're replacing your AC compressor or AC components, you may have had a leak and some of this pag oil may have already leaked out. So we're going to get a preliminary amount of oil that is in our compressor and add accordingly to the new compressor. So at this point here, you can clearly see that there was not a lot of fluid or pag oil in our old compressor. Let's go ahead and dump this out and we're gonna clean this. We're gonna to have to reuse this uh, cup itself. Then you wanna go ahead and take your new compressor here. We're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove these bolts. And remove our caps. Gonna go ahead and use this here. Usually the compressors are shipped with PAG oil in it. So this is what we got out of it for PAG oil and it is about two and a half ounces. So the complete system itself, we were replacing all the AC components, including the condenser, would require about five ounces total of PAG oil. We're only gonna be doing a compressor here and not the condenser. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add that oil into or back into our air compressor. We're gonna go ahead and dump this out and we're going to use some fresh PAG oil here that comes with our compressor unit. I'm gonna measure out our two and a half ounces here. 
Now what we want to do is go ahead and add that two and a half ounces into our compressor here. Now naturally the compressor wants to fall over. If you don't have an extra set of hands, I'm going to simply use a hammer to prop it up. Let's go ahead and add our fluid. This point here, let's go ahead and reinstall our caps. The reason for this here is we want to prevent any debris from falling down inside these ports here. So pop these on. And we're just going to throw our bolts in and just run them down by hand. We don't have to have them tight. Just keep those caps from popping off. Go ahead and feed that compressor in. I went ahead and cleaned up our bolts here. And I want to try and get the two top bolts installed. So I have that bolt threaded in by hand. I'm going to go ahead and feed this one in. Get that put through, and we'll get that one installed as well. With the top bolted in, we can go ahead and get our two lower bolts threaded in here. And let's go ahead and zip those down and snug them up. And once those bolts bottom out, just give them a little bit more. You want to make sure that they're tight. We'll go ahead and do the same for the other. And then from the top side here, and tighten down the bolts from here. Connect the electrical connector here. Snap that together. On our AC lines here, we have a rubber O-ring. I'm gonna go ahead and use a small pick. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the O-ring that is on here. I'm gonna remove the O-ring. And at this point here, we're gonna remove our plug. I'm gonna add some PAG oil to the cap here. Put some of that oil on that O-ring. Let's slip that on and into place. Got to remove that cap. I'm gonna apply a thin coat of oil on to this O-ring here. Let's go ahead and bring this down and line that up. Let's go ahead and press that into the compressor. Use the supplied bolt that was in the compressor. Use your socket and extension to go ahead and just kind of run that bolt down. Let's go ahead and repeat for the other line. Go ahead and remove that O-ring. Get the new O-ring installed. Coat the O-ring in some fresh PAG oil here. Remove the plug. And let's go ahead, line that up, drop it down carefully, and press it in.
once we get that lined up, go ahead and get that bolt threaded down. Once that's seated, snug it down. You feel the bolt bottom out, quarter turn. Bolt is bottomed out, quarter turn. Go ahead and get our belt installed. Now that we have our belt run around where we need it, let's go ahead and get this on our tensioner here. Pop that belt onto the tensioner. Want to make sure that our belt is on all of our pulleys. Go ahead and take the wheel well liner. Feed this up around your strut. On the top here, we have these two clips. Slides onto the fender liner. And do that for both of these here. And line this up. On the back side here, we're gonna install a couple of the plastic locking push pins. installed on the back side here. Let's get our upper clips lined up here. Now that we have our two clips lined up, I'm gonna install the Phillips head screws on the top here. And go ahead and snug those down. They don't have to be super tight, but you can feel them snug down and tighten. Go ahead and grab our screws here. These are the Torx head screws. Let's go ahead and get those installed. Just snug those into place. Once you have these three in, go ahead and install the fourth one on the bottom side in the back. Install the three lower screws into the low portion of the bumper cover. Once we have all three of these caught, go ahead and snug them down. Now we're gonna pop out these clips I had popped in temporarily to hold the fender liner in place. Grab our cover here, line this up.
Now that our side cover is on, you can now go ahead and install your wheel. Take your wheel, line it up, get that set on, and let's go ahead and install all the lug nuts by hand. Get them started a few threads. Once we have all those started, let's go ahead and snug those down. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds. Once you're all torqued down, install your center cap. You're going to pay attention to the notch here on the cap. That's where your valve stem is going to go. You're all set. I want to get to remove our air intake here. There's going to be three plastic buttons here. Use your trim tool to go ahead and remove them. Our particular vehicle has different variants of our plastic clips. So we're just going to use different tools to pull them out. Once those are removed, go ahead and pull us up. And we're going to pull the air intake out of the air box where the filter is located. I'm going to use our flathead screwdriver and just kind of lift up on the little tab right here. Pop this out. Do the same for the back side. Pop that off and set that aside. Now on the top here, there are two brackets, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. There's normally a clip here with a rubber insulator to support the radiator, but ours is missing. Use your 10 millimeter gear wrench. Use your 10 millimeter gear wrench. We want to go ahead Loosen this and remove it. There's normally two bolts here, one here, one here. That bolt, set that aside. And go ahead and remove that bracket and the support. Go ahead and twist that up and off. Now this here goes into the top of the AC condenser inside here. So go ahead and set that aside. I'm gonna use a pair of pliers with a hook on there. I'm gonna to go to the switch harness or the connector right here. Just going to gently pinch the little lock tab on the top. Wiggle that gently and pull up. Go ahead and pop that off. I want to go ahead and remove the pressure switch right on the top of the AC condenser. On the AC condenser, you have the upper line and then there's a lower line down below. They're held in place by 10 millimeter bolts. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove the bolts and separate the line from the condenser. And repeat for the bottom. I'm going to use a swivel, 10 millimeter socket, and extension. And loosen and remove that bolt. We're going to push our radiator back. We're going to push that radiator up and towards the motor. That'll give us some clearance on the front side here to get to the AC line. Right here, we just use a screwdriver to go ahead and pop that line out. Let's go back up top, disconnect the upper hose. 
Now I want to just connect the upper AC line from the condenser here. I'm going to grab that port and wiggle that gently, separating the line with the O-ring. If you want, you can use your screwdriver and gently pry, working that off. Push that radiator back a little bit. Reach down, disconnect the AC pressure switch. Press in on that little clip on the top. Remove that harness. We should be able to go down, grab that AC condenser. And slide this up and out. Now at this point here, I want to go ahead and flip this unit over and want to remove the 10 millimeter bolt from our receiver dryer unit here. Good, remove that bolt. All I want to do is pull the receiver dryer unit, separate it from the two tubes here. I want to gently work these free. Remove the old dryer. There are two O-rings on here. We're going to use our pick, remove those O-rings. I'm going to take our O-rings. Slide these on. With both those on there, let's go ahead and wipe them down clean. And then we're gonna put a fresh coat of PAG oil on that. We'll go ahead and install our unit here. Snap that into position, install your retainer clip here. Let's go ahead and snug that down. I'm going to go ahead and use our 15 16 deep socket to remove the pressure switch here. I'm going to go ahead and install this onto the replacement component. Using our 14 millimeter socket, we want to go ahead and remove the plug here. Go ahead and take the switch, line that up, thread that into place. We'll go ahead and snug that down. Now on the bottom side here where AC condenser is going to fit, there's a rubber grommet here and one on the driver's side. You can actually reach through the lower portion of the grill or the bumper Make sure those are both seated. Then we'll go ahead and lower our AC condenser down and into those. Now on the AC lines here, you want to go ahead and clean these ends off. Inspect the O-rings, make sure they're not torn or worn. If they are, you want to go ahead and replace them now. But wipe these down. Do the same for the bottom. Go ahead and slowly lower the condenser down into position while applying some forward pressure on that radiator. I want to go ahead and lower these, lower the condenser down into the rubber grommets. So line up our upper line with the condenser. Good, work that in. I want to make sure it goes in nice and even. Install the upper bolt. Go ahead and snug down that upper AC bolt. Once that bolt bottoms out, just give it a little bit more. Just want to make sure that's snug. Let's go ahead and do the same for the bottom. And at this point here, we have the AC line with the O-ring popped into the lower portion of the mounting bracket and the grommet. We can now go ahead and grab our radiator. We're going to lift that up and bring that 
forward again and get that installed into its rubber grommet. Do that on both sides. With that in place, we can go ahead and get our lower AC bolt installed for that line. Use your hand ratchet. I'm gonna go ahead and snug that down. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the receiver dryer connector here for that sensor. Line that up, push it down. You'll be able to feel that snap into place. We're gonna install our brackets here. It's going to be a hole here that goes onto the AC condenser on the upper rubber grommet. I want to go ahead and install your hardware. It's going to be one of these on each side to secure this in place. Go ahead and take your bracket. You have the rubber grommet here that goes on the top of the AC condenser post. Slide that down. Let's go ahead and get our bolts installed here. Go ahead and install the rubber grommet on the top. Take your retainer clip, slide that over. Go ahead and snap this into place and we'll repeat for the driver side. Go ahead and install our air intake tube into the air box. And then collect, connect the other intake port down below here. Snap that in. Then we'll go ahead and install our plastic push pins across the front here. On the back side of the intake right here, there's a clamp with a hose. Use our pliers, slide that clamp down, and then we'll slide that hose off. Just gonna pull this off to the side. On the back side, there is this heat shield and there was a plastic retainer. We're gonna use a 7 16 socket and short extension to go ahead and loosen that. This should allow us to pull that down. Gonna use our 10 millimeter socket and extension and remove the center bolt. and used our long magnet to go ahead and pull that bolt out. I'm gonna remove our 10 millimeter bolt right here. I'm gonna pop our other line out of the retainer clip so that these two are free. Let's go ahead and wiggle those hoses out of the port in the back. And slowly pull this, good and wiggle and pop that lower line out. Now with the small line removed, we can go ahead and pull the large line up and out. Now these ports here, we don't want to leave exposed for a long period of time. I'm gonna put some tape over the top. If you have a rubber plug, you can go ahead and use that. Now for the hard line in the back, you can use tape on that. We have a cap that'll pop on over that and keep that protected from debris. I'm just gonna tuck that off on the side there. I'm gonna use a number four Allen wrench here. I'm gonna loosen those first, and I should be able to reach in there with just the socket and spin them out.
Now that we have our expansion valve out on the back side here, there's going to be two O-rings. Ours are still on the tubes on the inside. Now what you want to do is do an inspection of the O-rings on the tube itself. Make sure that they're in good condition. At that point there, you can probably reuse those O-rings. If not, if they look torn, worn, anything like that, you want to go ahead and replace them now before you install the new component. I'm going to use a small pick. I'm going to go in and grab that O-ring. I'm going to slide that off. And before I just pop that off, I want to get reach in there. Pull that O-ring off. Now I got some fresh pag oil and I put it inside the cap right here. I'm going to go ahead and put some on our new O-rings here. Let's go ahead and install this O-ring. Go ahead and take that new component. Now you have to feed the upper portion of that valve in place first and then press that in. Go ahead and install your Allen screws here. Just press both of those in. Use your socket. Go ahead and thread those in. I'm going to thread them in as far as I can by hand. And then we'll snug those down. And once you feel it snug down, you want to give it just a little bit more. Making sure that those O-ring seals are seating properly. Now you'll notice that both of those Allen screws are completely recessed evenly and that the face of the block itself is flush with that rubber around the perimeter. You see that around the perimeter here. That's just the way that the original one came out. Now on the hard line end here, I want to go ahead and remove this cap. I want to go ahead and replace this O-ring as well. You can use a small pick. Go ahead and pop that O-ring off and then we'll replace it with a new one. I'm going to remove that O-ring. I'm going to take the new O-ring and put some fresh AC PAG oil on that O-ring. And let's go ahead and slip that on. I went ahead and pulled our tape off of here. I want to replace this O-ring as well. So use your pick. Install the new O-ring. I'm going to put some fresh PAG oil on the O-ring seal itself. I want to go ahead and feed this down inside. I want to go ahead and feed the tube in. Let's go ahead and get our lower line installed. reach down there and we want to get our anchoring block or flange moved back. All right, we just got our center bolt for the flange in. We're just going to try and get that started a few threads. Let's go ahead and get our extension and socket on there. I'm going to try and thread that in as far as I can by hand. I want to make that snug. There we go. Let's go ahead and install our bolt here. Go ahead and snug that down. Go ahead and install the hard line into the plastic retainer clip. 
And on the top here, I'm gonna snap on our upper retaining clip. On the back side here, we have our little heat shield to install. Get that up there. Install the plastic nut retainer here. Simply just press that into position and it'll lock on. And then take this vacuum hose here, bring that around. I'm gonna reconnect that to the back side of the intake right here. Go ahead and use your pliers. And put on the hose clamp. Now if you have caps on the port here, you wanna go ahead and remove those. We're gonna use our tool here to remove the cores. And this is the little Schrader port right here. Go ahead and pull that out. Go ahead and use the new replacement. We're going to put some pag oil on the little O-ring there. Slip that in. And thread that down. Once you feel the bottom out, just give it a little bit more. I want to make sure that's tight. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process for the other side. This one here is a little bit larger of a tool. And do the same with this one here. Put a little bit of pag oil on that little O-ring. Go ahead and drop that in. Go ahead and thread that down. Go ahead and seat it nicely. Once you're all set, go ahead and install the appropriate cap. Once you're all set with this here, you can now go ahead and bring the vehicle down to a shop and have it professionally recharged. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.